It can be quite the undertaking when trying to learn a new character as there are multiple ways to approach the task and you can quickly begin to feel lost. With an overwhelming move list at each character's disposal, alongside character specific nuances and tactics, it's easy to end up dropping a character you may potentially love because you feel like it's just not working out straight away. Hopefully I will be able to guide you to the resources and equip you with the tool set to be able to navigate the beginning journey of any new character. If you are brand new to Tekken, I have a complete mechanics guide as the game does very little to explain things to you, so I'll leave a link to that below. So I'm going to be talking about getting the most mileage out of the fewest moves, and to do so I'll be doing something counterintuitive and learning a character that relies on incorporating a bunch of moves. So let's say I've got my character and I'm in practice mode. There are no tutorials to tell me what to do. The closest excuse we have for a prompt are the sample combos at the bottom of the move list. A lot of people like to work through the move list to feel out the character. Now, if you're a newer player, you don't really get too much out of this because you don't have that benchmark to compare a good move or a bad move to. Nevertheless, it's useful to see what your character has to offer and can help you get invested in the character. It should be highlighted that not all moves are equal. You don't need to use all your character's moves when you begin playing Tekken. Characters have an insane number of moves, with even the smallest move pool coming in at a whopping 60 attacks. You only need a handful of core moves, which you can apply to many situations, or continually enforce certain scenarios which those moves are completely dominant in. Some moves are there for extremely niche situations, or seem useless at first, but become more prevalent in their importance against better opponents. I'm going to break down a checklist of move categories that you should assign one or two moves to, and focus on incorporating them when those certain scenarios arise. A poke from someone you don't like would be annoying and seem as if they're trying to test you. you kids knock it all. A poke in a fighting game is pretty much the same thing. Generally, they are quick and safe attacks that deal small damage. But unless you're trying to deal a death by a thousand cuts, they're usually meant to check how your opponent deals with a blow or an attempt to lead into a more damaging scenario. Almost every character has access to one of the most insane moves and pokes at their disposal, the one jab. Coming out at 10 frames, this move is normally the quickest move your character has, is plus on block, and grants a whopping 8 frames on hit. It can also lead into different string mix-ups and lead to more mental frame advantage. Outside of this, a lot of characters have a wonderful poke in the form of down forward 1. Usually it is 13 to 14 frames and either minimally unsafe on block or even neutral. Finding your character's best and second best poke is vital for both starting your offense and protecting yourself from oppressive opponents. You can identify a good potential poke by it being reasonably fast at around 13 to 14 frames, being very safe on block to not restrict your movement and follow ups, and a bonus is having good range. An example of proper poke usage could be a down forward 1 into a high crush to evade high responses, a jab to interrupt slower attacks, a continuous flurry of pokes to force your opponent to respect you. Or if you're poking with an attack that is negative 4 or less on block, you can safely start incorporating sidesteps against linear retaliations. Alongside this, finding a decent low poke to chip away against turtling characters is important to frustrate your opponent. Since they deal lesser damage, your opponent may not try to block them as often, which can really begin to rack up over the rounds. Bonus points if your low leaves you plus on hit, since you can start your offense easier. So we should really look for three good pokes outside of your jab, one being the quickest slash safest mid poke, our longest range poke, and a good low poke. I've talked about incorporating low pokes to chip away your opponent, but a chunky low will force your opponent to really start thinking about ducking, enabling you to start landing those heftier mids. There is no point in having some of the best mids in the game if you can't get your opponent to duck. The key to utilising a risky low is being sparse in its usage, as big low attacks are normally very punishable on block. 
you should think about what you want your key load to do. You may want to find one that does massive damage or one that leaves you very plus on hit so you can then begin to start pursuing your opponent. It could also be that your key low shines with its counter hit properties, leading to a knockdown or even a full combo. I would be very wary of relying on the infamous snake edge attacks, ones that are very slow yet lead to a full combo because they are launch punishable on block. Anywhere outside of laggy online lobbies, they are very reactable, yet this doesn't stop me from eating every single snake edge that comes my way. Sometimes you must settle for what your character has though, yet luckily for me, Fang has a plethora of moves to choose from. Everyone has got to learn their character's punishment tools. Your 10 frame or 11 frame is probably going to be used against more safer opponents, but unfortunately you may not get anything decent until 14 frames or higher. If you're just starting off, learning your quickest punishment tool, a chunkier 13 frame or so move, your launch punisher, and one or two while standing attacks will really get you going. If you are a brand new player, everyone throws out so many unsafe moves in beginner ranks, so having the muscle memory of a launch punisher on deck is very valuable, you can win so many games with pure retaliation. Depending on the character, your whiff punishment may be a key component of the toolkit. It's always a good idea to have at least some option as a whiff punisher, even if it's not that wonderful. Identifying a suitable whiff punisher for your character is something that has the decent to fantastic range, and can grant the most reward at a reasonable speed. They don't need to be super fast, having one that's around 15 frames would be probably the best bet. Your whiff punishment tool does not need to be safe. You can have something that's horrendous on block because if you use it correctly, it should always hit someone who is trapped in their ending lag. Having a decent counter hitting tool that you follow up with after plus frames can really boost your overall damage output for hardly any extra effort. Half the battle for getting most out of your character is knowing just what button you should be pressing after you have frame advantage. If you're Lee and you're plus, using the 224 string to check for counter hits leads to way more damaging opportunities than the one jab options even though they're both 10 frames. Your character's counter hitting options may not be that strong, and if that's the case then don't stress. Substitute this section for finding those key moves that you should be utilising once you open up your opponent and are on plus frames. There may be slightly slower attacks that enforce scary mix ups, or high damaging as well as being relatively safe as long as you have the chance to get them off in the first place. Fang has a tremendous counter hitting tool in the form of back 1, which comes out in frame 10 and leads to a knockdown on counter hit. I will primarily fish for this back 1 counter hit after a jab or down forward 1, as they are plus and neutral respectively. Even if a jab were to trade with a back 1, you still have plenty of time to land the shoulder. Now this is somewhat subjective to your character and your playstyle. But nonetheless, it's a good idea to have some moves in mind that you can utilise to keep your opponent playing within a particular space that you're comfortable within. If you're playing someone like Jack, keeping your opponent at range becomes a solid game plan since your key moves shine at this range and make it more difficult for your opponent to retaliate. A good keep out move is one that has good range, is either safe or pushes your opponent away enough that it's difficult to punish, and ideally quick to recover on whiff. Something like a Death Fist is much more valuable as a whiff punisher on slower moves rather than a keep out move, as if you miss time and Death Fist the air, you're going to suffer the consequences. Even if you're not trying to turtle and keep the opponent out all day, having a move to stuff overly aggressive opponents or to run down the clock in dire circumstances is never a bad idea. Sometimes you're suffering a barrage of attacks and you don't know if you should block high or low, step right or left, or just pull the ethernet cable out from your modem. You may need a certified panic move. Panic moves range from reliable and spammable to oh god please work. You may have heard of the term magic 4, and it really is magical. 
characters with a magic 4 have a standing 4 attack that is normally around 11 frames, is safe, and launches on counter hit. If your opponent is spamming moves over and over in your face, it's a safe bet that most of those moves are negative on block, so throwing out a 4 will leave you with a free counter hit launcher. Now if you don't have a magic 4, you have access to the classic Dong Jab. Holding down and then hitting 1 will give you a plus 5 frames on hit to help you get composed. Now other than these two attacks, you may have an attack that is super evasive, such as having an inbuilt sidestep or backdash. Maybe you can crush highs and possibly even evade mids. Things like backswing blows are wonderful get off me moves, as they can steal back your turn from overly aggressive opponents. Stances are truly wonderful and are one of the most defining aspects of Tekken with their flair and unique attributes. Although as a beginner it can be quite difficult to figure out how and when you should incorporate them into your gameplay. When I began playing Tekken, Lee was my first character, and well he still is, but he has a unique stance called Hitman Stance. Now I never really utilised it so much when I first started, so was this a bad thing to do? I don't think so. I believe it's more important to focus on identifying your core tools, those 5 or so moves which really give your character leverage in majority of the situations, for me and Lee that was his 4, down 3, back 1, 1, 2, and so on. These are just extremely useful moves that got me very far on their own. I believe this goes double for stance characters like Yoshi, Lei, Eddie, and others. This may be a little confusing, and I don't mean to forgo every stance, but try and focus on incorporating one stance at a time, such as possibly only using Yoshi's pogo stance, and then when you feel more comfortable, throw in some helicopter moves. If you slowly introduce your character's moves and stances, it becomes a lot more digestible in terms of finding impactful and game-changing abilities. For Fang, I'm not really going to bother with anything outside of his crouch dash. I know I'm doing this character a disservice, but we're just beginning our Fang journey, so let's keep it simple. So you're going to have to initiate offense at least some of the time, so having some kind of attack at your disposal so you can start opening up your opponent is vital. You can use approaching moves to close the gap between you and your opponent, which can also be utilised as your pressure starter, but pressure moves don't specifically need to be gap closers, they just overlap sometimes. I personally don't feel the need to urgently figure out a move dedicated to closing the gap, since a lot of the time having good movement is enough to get into your opponent's space. Although, usually your while running moves leave you plus on block and act as a good pressure starter and gap closer, but being predictable with these types of attacks will leave you stepped a lot of the time. So pressure starters can be identified as moves that open up multiple pathways, such as attacks that leave you neutral or plus on block, therefore expanding your potential follow-ups, or moves that lead into types of scenarios where your character really shines in, such as enforcing unfavourable mix-ups. A lot of the time you can use your poke to initiate pressure and then commit to a slower follow up using your plus frames or fish for counter hits. Fang has a tremendous pressure starter in the form of his headbutt. This move is around plus 5 on block and even forces your opponent into crouch, further limiting their options. It's so easy to just find a new character, look at their juggle combo, practice that for 2 hours, then jump online and get stomped. It's absolutely the last thing you should figure out for with your character before you start heading online, and when you're just starting out, finding the most simple basic juggle combo is absolutely enough. You don't need to find the most optimal damaging series of attacks, or the largest wall carry juggle, just keep it simple. I'm just going to learn this one bread and butter fang combo, I have no idea if there's an easier or harder one, this is the one I found, this is the one I'm going to use. And let's get one homing move figured out to stop those step happy people. For fang, I'm just going to use back 4, since it's pretty much a 13 frame homing move. All in all, the main tip is just to focus on a few moves in the beginning, keep it simple. 
This will allow you to actually react to the opponent and get a feel for their main gameplay styles and identify their habits. Every time you feel a little bit more confident, throw in an extra move. If you're playing a stance character, throw in an extra stance. You'll get a feel for it and you'll figure out when you're ready to start putting more and more things in. And if you're feeling a little bit restricted, that is a good time to start throwing in a couple extra moves. Now to go back to playing Lee. 